Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I teach grade 12 data management and uh, we're going to write a dice game simulation in Google Sheets and you can also do the same steps in Microsoft Excel or another spreadsheet program. Um, the game is called Primes, Pairs and Perfect Squares. You roll two dice and you score each time you do. Each time you roll those two dice you score two points if the sum is a prime. You score three points if the dice are a pair, like say they're both threes. And if the sum is a perfect square, you score five points. We're going to write a simulation that simulates 500 turns and then calculates the score for each type and the overall score. So let's get started. Here is the, uh, I've already set up some headers at the top here for the two die rolls, the sum of the die rolls, the, whether or not, or the, the value of the score based on the primes. So that would be two points if they're prime, otherwise zero three points if the dice uh, make a pair and five points if there's a perfect square and then we're going to sum those up for the overall score. So we're going to use the rand between function and all we do is put in the low and the high values a random number between one and six. I'm going to highlight and fill this across control R on my keyboard will do that and the sum is going to be A2 plus B2 in this case. I can also just click with my mouse press the plus sign click there. So equals A2 plus B2. You can see 2 plus 5 is 7. Now for, let's go to the uh, pair scoring. This one's the easiest. Equals if, so if the two numbers are the same, I want to score three points. So if A2 equals B2, and then a comma, what will the value be if this statement is true? If the statement is true and the values are the same, then I want to score three points. If the values are different, that is it's the statement A2 equals B2 is false, I'm going to score zero. Put a closing bracket and you can see in this case because my two values are different I scored zero. Now for a prime score that would be that I get a prime number that would be what two, three, five, seven, or eleven. We're going to use the if function again, if, but then I have a series of statements that I want to test. And you have a couple ways to do this. The way we're going to do today is using the OR function. So if one of these statements is true is how this works. So OR, what will we check? We'll check to see if the sum is equal to the value 2. So C2 equals 2. If C2 equals 2 that would be uh, a time that we do want to score points. OR if C2 equals 3. OR if C2 equals 5. OR if C2 equals 7 or the last one if C2 equals 11. In any of those cases, you can see my closing bracket there matches up, comma, in any of those cases I want to score two points, otherwise I score zero points. And that's it for that if. In this case I got a six as a sum, that's not prime, it's also not a pair, so I don't have any points yet. Now for a perfect square, that would be if I get the number uh, two squared or three squared. So one squared is only one, which we can't get with two dice. Uh, 4 squared would be 16, which is too much. So I'm only looking for the values 4 and 9, 2 squared or 3 squared. So this again equals if bracket. I'll use or again. If the sum C2 is equal to 4, comma, that means or if C2 is equal to 9, in either case I'm going to score 5 points, otherwise I will score 0 points. Now the overall score is the sum, I'm going to use a sum function now, the sum of D2 up to F2 and you can see the colon that Google Sheets has put in place for me that adds up all the numbers between D2 and F2. So row 2 here now has two dice rolls, a sum, and it has scored nothing for the first two types of scoring but I do have a perfect square so I got four points that time. You see that every time I do something these numbers change and are, are refreshed. So I'm going to scroll down here now, let's see, I want to go down to about 500. Since I started on row 2 I need to go to 501. I'm going to hold shift and click down to there. So I've highlighted everything from the top of my sheet, highlighted down to row 501. There we are. I'm going to press Control and D on my keyboard. That'll fill in all of those values and it takes just a moment. You can see it processing up here because there's a lot of data there. It's going to generate a lot of values. All right and now I want to find out what is the average or the mean of the prime number scoring column. So this is the average oops, average of this stuff up above here. So this column starts with D2 and it goes down to D501. You can see it highlighting in orange there on my screen. When I press enter it's going to make that calculation. Again it takes a minute. 
and it looks like a boat 0.8. I'm going to do the same thing for the next two columns, so I can just fill that across. Grab it right there, fill it across. And one more, we can actually do that with the overall score as well. Now I see this value came out to exactly one. I want to make sure that I have enough decimal places, so up here you can increase or decrease the number of decimal places. There's three decimal places now. So now we have the mean prime scoring uh, value, the mean pair score, and the mean uh, perfect score, which in this case does come out to be exactly one, and the overall score. And so the rest of the activity, the rest of the exercise then is after calculus scores, that's what this is here, then find the theoretical probability of scoring each type on a single turn. So you don't need the spreadsheet to do this, but what's the probability that you get a prime number when you roll two dice? What's the probability that you get a pair? And what's the probability that you get a perfect square? Um, take those values here that, you, that you're going to figure those out. That's theoretical probability. Multiply, find the product, multiply each of those values by, oops, sorry, this should say three and this should say five. Multiply those values by the uh, value that you get by scoring that type. So two times the probability of getting a prime, three times the probability of getting a pair, and five times the probability of getting a perfect square. And then see what happens. See how things compare with the values that you have here. And also see how the sum of these values here compares with your overall score. All right, that's it. Ask me any questions. Thanks.